Hi everybody, this is Tina with Rehash Designs. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, I am here today just to do kind of a quick video that was requested. And this is on um, journal closures. And um, I'm going to do the best I can to go over a few. Um, I don't have enough um, covers or finished journals to do all of them that I would like, but I'll try and go over the main basic ones, um, you know, for this viewer. And the other thing I would suggest is to look at a lot of my videos that I've done on covers because there's many different types of closures there. Uh, and also other people's videos out there. A lot of them, when they're making a journal, they'll show you how they made their closure and um, that will help too. But I am going to try and, and go through a few of them today and um, try and explain how they work. And um, also, you just, you know, show you some examples of what I have on hand. Now, as far as me getting videos out there, I had talked about uh, me not putting them out there very much. And I'm probably not going to be able to. I'm going to do them whenever I can. Um, we're in the process of uh, moving and so, you know, that's daunting. There's a lot going on, but I still am crafting occasionally because I've learned through experience that in the most stressful times in my life, um, that's exactly when I need to be doing it. Um, when it's hectic, that's when I, I really need to do it, that it helps me decompress so I will be doing a few videos here and there I have no idea on what probably not going to be a whole big start to finish journal type thing um, just because um, doing the series like that's a little bit more involved um, you have to plan a little bit more and I'm not going to be able to do that also I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of editing so there's going to be a lot of you know um, just me turning on the camera type stuff. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now. I don't know how long that'll last. Um, hopefully just, you know, a couple months or something, but who knows? I don't know if I have to pack up my entire craft room, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. Um, which I'm assuming I will. Um, we're hoping to find another house, but we may not. We may have to build or something. And if that happens, well, then I'm going to be without a craft room for a little while. So um, we'll see. We'll see what ha I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. But anyway, that's where I'm at. So let's get into the closures. Um, so the person that asked me this, I'm said something about making sure that it wasn't just tying it around the the journal and that is always an option to, you know tying a ribbon or something around it but we're going to do things a little bit more involved than that okay so I don't know if this is the official name but this is a hitch post fastener that I used on this cover kind of hard to show you how it works um with it not full but it basically what you do is you put this little fastener on and you put an eyelet on this side and you put the ribbon through it and then you have this little hitch post and I'm here let me take this off and then I will show you or I won't take it off but I'll kind of I think you can see I just punched an eyelet which is this thing and I put the eyelet through right here okay and let me see if I can get this out without undoing all of it all right so here's the eyelet that I put through and I use this this is great because it'll punch through this is pretty thick chipboard so it'll punch through that. So you punch your hole first and you do that with one of 
these two um, things. When you're doing the eyelet, it depends on the size of your eyelet, but this is the bigger size. And then so you basically just punch a hole like that through there. And after you do that, you put this in your little eyelet attacher. And you don't have to just use this kind. There's other kinds. And then you just kind of squish it and put it on there like that. Okay. So that will go on here. And then you will, it'll attach on there. Then you basically put a ribbon through there. You have to double the ribbon because you want a bow on one side and this on the other. Here, let me undo it. So I'll show you. So you've got one long piece of ribbon. And you're going to take that ribbon. And fold it in half. And then you're going to take it and put it through the eyelet. Let's see if I get something to poke. I always need something to poke it through for me because I can never. That's too wide. Just to kind of get it started. Let's see here. And it will fit because I had it in there. So I just need to get it out the other end, which I don't know. Okay, there we go. So you've got this part here, and then this part here, and then you just here's your thing, you just loop it through. And what that does is that gives you this on that end. So that's the part that's there. And then what you do is I usually wait till this is full. And I haven't, I haven't done anything with this journal. So, but then you just tie, you know, a bow. And, of course, this is going to change once you fill it up. What's great about this type of closure is that if you don't have much in it, you can make a bow, you know. Let's, let me see. I'll put something in there. You can make a bow that's down here. I'm doing a terrible job on this bow. But you basically tie a bow. Right? And then you just attach it. Okay? To this fastener. And then you have a bow here. And it, and it you know, the fuller it is, you just, you know, make it, put the bow up, you know, further so you have more of a gap in between here. But that's pretty much how you do it. It's not hard. This part is easy. Um, I have two different um, type of hitch post fasteners. This one, I bought these. Um, and this is what I have on here. But I bought these off of Amazon. And I think these are Tim Holtz. Um, they're very similar. The Tim Holtz is a little bit. A little bit bigger um, not much and then these but um, I bought a large quantity of them simply because I was making um, a lot of journals and it was just more cost-effective to do it that way but you can certainly get these and I don't remember how many you get in there but you do get you know quite a few you know depending upon how many journals you think you're gonna make and then also the eyelets you can get, you know, online or you can buy, you can buy them in bulk. You can buy just a few, but that's what you can get. And then this thing, and you'll use it because it punches holes and it sets the eyelet. So now another way you can do this, 
which I really like. Um, it's not as fancy, but it works really well. Get that out of there. I'm going to pull this out and show you. You can take an elastic, you know, these are things, I got these at the dollar store. Um, any kind of hair elastic like this will work. And you can put that in here. Now, I wouldn't necessarily use this color, but, you know, whatever color you think will go with your journal. And you'll put that in there just like you would the ribbon. It's a little trickier. Got to get that in there and pull it through. Basically, you do the same thing you do at the ribbon. And I use this pokey thing because then what happens is I can get it out the other end. It's a little tricky, but it's not that hard, guys. You basically poke it through and pull it like that. So then you have one end over here. And you do the same thing, kind of what you do with the ribbon. You just take one end and put it through the other end. I don't know that it matters which one, really. But, okay. There we go. And then pull it tight. Oh, maybe I'll do it the other way. So it doesn't seem to want to cooperate. All right. So, then pull it tight. I like the ones with these little ridges on it like this. If you can see that, it has these little tiny ridges. And it's because it catches. Okay. And then what you do is that becomes your little loopy thing right there. And it stretches. And if you want something that's really tight and secure, that is a great way to close things. And they make all different types and different colors. I've got a big thing full of them here so that's something to think about because let's see I'm sure I have other colors in here but yeah I mean you can get all kinds of colors to use you don't have to use that brown one um these will work too they don't have to have the little ridgy the little ridge thing in there um they do stay. Uh, the other thing you could use is you could use, yeah, here's the, here are the uh, other ones down here. Um, the other thing you could do is you could use um, just a, um, something like a shoelace or something like that if you didn't want to use a ribbon and it would work the same way. Um, but the elastic thing works really good, um, and it's a very secure closure, and like I said, it'll stretch uh, a great deal. I mean, it'll go out that far, so it will cover your, it will cover your journal, so. Okay, so the other thing, since we're speaking of all of this, is you can take just a little let me use a different journal here oh let me show you this closure real quick guys this is one that i did you do not have to have a post fastener to do this um this is one that i did for valentine's day and this is one i did for valentine's day and um it's, this is just a button. This is a button that it, I sewed on. Okay, I sewed this on. And um, honestly, guys, it just has to be a button that sticks up a little so that you can go ahead and put that on like that. Okay, and I could have just done, where'd that pink one go? I could have done on this 
I could have just done the pink elastic and that would have worked too. See, that would have just, you know, instead of the ribbon, then you would have put this on there and then that would have, that would have been your closer. Okay. Um, you know, either way would work. And this is a pretty thick, um, a pretty thick, uh, what do you call it? journal so you know I think it would work fine there too I mean I don't you know the only reason I did it with this ribbon for me is it added you know to the cover and the look of the cover but definitely this would work on that there too okay so I do want to show you that so you can see um, my whole box over here just tumbled over. So what I was going to show you also well, I'll just use this one. I'll just use this one to give you an idea. You could do something here. Let me take this apart and I can show you. You can do something like this is a headband from the dollar store. Take that off. You could do something like this. Okay. You could do something like this and put it across this way. You know. I mean, this is, I'm loosely doing this, but just giving you an idea of something that you may want to do. Of course, you could take this apart and tie it, make it tighter if you wanted to. Um, definitely would work that way. Uh, I mean, this isn't the color I would use, but you, these are headbands from the dollar store. You can definitely use those as a closure. Okay. You don't have to use. And they have all different kinds. You know, for a dollar. All different colors. Okay. Um, definitely do that. This is a, um, a dog collar that I bought that was the wrong size for one of my dogs and I never used it but anyway I always thought and at some point I will use it that it would make a great closure now this one may be too big for that you would obviously have to make it the size for the journal that you have yeah I think this journal may be just too fat for this one but you get the idea me see if I can maybe do this. I'm gonna be tight. Okay. But I mean you could do something like that, you know, um as a closure. Okay. Sky's the limit. Um you could attach it to the back or the side and then have that. You could have the buckle in the middle, you know, like this right here. You could have it in the back, you know, whatever, whatever you think you might want to use with that. So that's one way um, to put closures on with a hitch post or actually several ways and with elastic. Um, that's just something. One of the first things that I learned how to do. Here is one that's very simple. And all this is, is two eyelets. One here and one here. Punch through with this. You punch your hole. And then you put your eyelet in. Which basically you just put this on here. You put it inside 
the hole and you smush down and that's what puts your eyelet in um, these are I'll take one of them out so you can see but basically it's a, kind of the same thing we did with the ribbon on the other one except we're not we're not tying a bow we're putting it through here okay and we've got one looped on this side and then we have two loose there and you you make your ribbons the same size to start so here this is in the middle and then you just pull it through okay and what that does and I put it through the ribbon also in the front just so it wouldn't kind of smush it down so you do that on both because you have an eyelet here and an eyelet here and then you tie it now I think you could do this without an eyelet but what the eyelet does is it it, it keeps a chipboard from ripping or tearing or wearing wearing down so you could possibly just punch a hole and do the same thing with any kind of ribbon that you have then you tie you just tie a bow and there you go it's pretty and it keeps it closed so that's a really super easy way i did one just recently like that and the cool thing is on that it really does um it holds it it holds it pretty tight because this is a pretty full that other one wasn't very full but you can see that this is a very very full journal and it it totally holds it you know shut when you've got a gator mouth um just an eyelet on each end and this was just um this isn't even chipboard this is um uh scrapbook paper that has been collaged on and then just scrapbook paper on the back and so I definitely would put an eyelet on this I don't know that I would just put it through there um, because it could it could eventually rip and you don't want that so anyway there's that one so that is just a very basic um, closure I think a lot of people use Okay, so this is um hmm, this is one that I did. Let me move this stuff out of the way. I'm getting a pile over here. This is one that I did, and all this is this is a three ring um a three ring journal, and I've done several different types of three ring journals, but all I've done on that is on one of the rings I simply tied um, just um, this string and I measured it to where when I, I put it up that it was kind of even on both your ring kind of moves around a little so it'll it'll adjust but that keeps it closed and it looks cool for me your closure is part of your cover so you wanted to add to the look I wanted this to look kind of like a package that was tied up because you have all little postal stamps and all that and the postcards and all that in it and I just wanted something that kind of went with this whole journal and so all I did is just tie this string on there and that's that's a pretty nice closure for this I think it works for the style and that's what you have to look at you have to look at well you know I don't think a big ribbon bow thing would work there I kind of did that on this one but it's a little different I have a these are vintage buttons up here I put on here and then there is a vintage um, button here and what I did with that is I used um, this is a very small little journal that I made but basically I just sewed the button on uh, to the end of the binding and then tied this um, string around the the button and that's and then I just it's just hanging there like that and that's how it's 
tied on. Okay, so that is another way to do that. And again, you want it to, to go with the style um, of what you're making. Here's one I did that's just like it, and we did it a little different. On this one, rather than use a button, I just put some lace down the spine, and I put a tiny bit of lace here to glue this. Um, it's just uh, dyed seam binding that I put on there, and so it's just that one part is attached, okay? And I just measured it around because this part's going to be shorter because it's not going around as far. And then it just ties like that. And so even though they're very, they're basically the same journal, there's really no different because the cover was different. I did a different style of closure, you know, just so that it would it would go with the cover that's kind of my point is you want to you want it to complement your cover so anyway I, so i mean that looks you know better than putting the string on there it's different than the button so you know that's what you got to look at Okay, here's another one that I did with string. And on this one, I did it a little different. I didn't attach it over here. So you have to think about how it's going to open and how you're going to use it. And that also determines where you're going to put your closure. Um, this is one I did that was made out of a file folder, but it's not on this side. Okay, it is on this side. And that's because that's the real, that's the true back of it because it opens up all the way up, okay? And this is where our, um, our little uh, journal inside is. So we, since we open and close it differently, we just, you know, it goes this way. So that's just something to consider too as to where you're going to um, open and close it. Um, so this is on that side. You have to put a little bit of thought into it. Another type of closure is using elastic that you can buy that on by the roll. Um, I bought this off of Amazon and it comes in different um, different widths and stuff. Here's a lighter weight one. Um, I don't really like this late, this, I don't remember what mill it is, but you can use this too, um, depending upon, you know, what you're making and what you're trying to keep closed. Um, this is a budget journal I made and these are all vintage buttons and I just kind of used my closure as part of the whole thing. And so I just put, this is a button with a shank on it. So it's sticking up a little. So I kind of sewed it on the lace and then I glued the lace down, okay? And I put it, I actually put the button through the other side, the shank through the other side. And I went ahead and, and, and put another button on top of it to not show that part of it. So it, when you open it up, that's what you see, okay? But in any case, the point is, is that you have to have something um, high enough with the shank or whatever so that when you close this, this opens up like that, okay? When you close this, you just take this and you wrap it around, okay? And then the elastic, you know, it'll expand as you put things in this. Now, another way on a traveler's notebook, which is really popular, is that people will go ahead and put the elastic, um, through the middle in in the back on the um, spine but it does basically the same thing it'll go through here and usually they'll put an eyelet in there 
and then just tie the elastic, you know, just put the elastic through there and then tie it on the inside. And then you'll still have the same thing. You'll still have the elastic going around, okay, and closing it, okay? The other thing, again, you can use is you can get the, um, the bands, uh, the headbands from like the dollar store or Walmart or whatever. And you can also use that, that, those for that. If you're, if you want to do it that way. Now, one of the ways that I always tend to, it seems like I'm always doing elastic is, not elastic, but um, ribbons on my closures, is I tend to put them all the way around because it's part of the decoration. Um, I put them on the outside, and then when I get done, here's another one I did on the outside, but then a lot of times I'll put, um, I'll put a ribbon or or lace or something down the spine um this one i don't even know let's see what i did i haven't even really finished this this actually has a spot to put elastic through to add more pages to this um as a, a pull out uh journal but in any case when I do it this way, it's really to add an additional decoration, um, you know, all on here if I think it needs that. And, you know, this is just part of the decoration. And all I did is I glued it all the way around, okay? And if I'm sewing, I almost always reinforce it um, here just to give it a little extra reinforcement and I will reinforce it um, as I did right here, right here where it comes to um, the edge because in that way if it, you're not pulling it up and the glue is not moving it or anything like that and so it's on there secure. So I will usually, you know, sew it here and sew it here if I'm sewing a cover and I usually always somehow sew the cover. So that's a lot of times I'll do that. Now you can take um, this lace or a ribbon and have it underneath this other part of the cover. Um, I sewed two things together to make this cover and all I would have done is I would have put this underneath so you you didn't see it. But I used it as a decorative element So and I do a lot. So anyway, that's one way to do it. Okay, that's, I think, the most of what I was going to talk about. Um, for me, I think the easiest way is either going to put the eyelets in it, where, just like this one, where you're taking just the ribbon and tying it, okay? Or you do it with the hitch post. like this. You can put the elastic and then that would go like that. Okay. Or you can use that hitch post fastener and do a ribbon. Or if you have a button with a shank that sticks up a little, you can do that. So those are super easy. Um, and of course the easiest all right, is going to be just to take a ribbon, all right, oops, I probably should have just used the rest of that, and, um, you know, just to tie it around your, your journal and close it that way, um, seam binding, whatever it is you, you want to use. I love using seam binding. This is a bit too big for this, but 
just basically, guys, whatever you want to do, um, I don't, I think about the closure as I'm doing the cover. You know, I don't, I just kind of like, kind of think of what I'm going to put on the cover. Like this one. And I designed the whole cover and uh, part of the decision as to, of the design has to do with what kind of closure I'm going to put on it. Um, I just, I would have, I felt like if I would have just done this and um, not had a bow there, to me it would have just looked different and it wouldn't be the same. And I was putting this uh, grow green, grow green uh, red uh, bow there and to me it needed something over here so that was part of the decision so that's what I'm saying is it is part of the decision for me um, it's not just a practical thing it's like okay so how can I make this all tie together and look good I completely forgot I had this journal okay so this is just a charm that I bought okay uh, and I don't even know why it came to me to do this, but I just took some ribbon that would go with this and I basically, this ribbon goes underneath the back of this. You can see in the back of this, I have lace right here. So it's glued down all the way through here, goes all the way through the back is underneath all of this okay but then it comes out here and I mean I don't need this to hold it in but I just think it looks so cool it looks like the octopus is um looks like the octopus is keeping this closed okay and I just was fiddling with it and it, it works really well I think and it it adds to the cover that's kind of what I'm saying is that I don't ever look at the closure as just um, I mean just a way to keep it closed it's just part of the overall decoration you know and there's lots of ways you can take your ribbon on this and do something like okay so you could maybe um, have this attached on the end right here and then um, have something that goes through here and just hang so all you would need is like a heavy charm on the end of it and that can close it um, I've done several like that um, I'm trying to think of which one I did a, a nature journal that I kind of did that with a two like a big key I had a lock basically let me see all right here we go I'll show you how it works so basically what you're doing is, and this is not a great journal to show you on, but, um, but just to give you an idea. This is very tangled up. Okay, here we go. All right, so... For instance, you could put this here, you could put it over here, you could glue this down, um, you could put it over here. I think, I'm trying to remember how I did it on that one journal. I cannot remember because I've done so many journals. But basically, all you're doing See, I think I would put it in the middle. I think it would look best in the middle. You could have that there. And this could either go that way or the other way. And you basically are going to turn, spin this around to however it fits. Okay. Probably go this way. And it would go around. And basically what you do then is you would take this and just put it through there. Now, of course, if your journal's fuller, then, you know, obviously you would just wrap it one time or whatever.
but that will actually keep it closed um, because it's going through there a couple times and you've got this rusted lock and a key. That's a cool thing. So you want to think about your cover, um, the overall look of it, and um, that closure needs to be part of the, the whole thing. I mean, to me, that's that's part of what makes it, you know, unique is the closure. So put some thought into it. Um, and as I said, I would go look through not just my playlist, but other people's. And when they're making a journal, if they make a closure, um, just kind of look and see how they do it. Okay. Because there's all different kinds. And you know what? I mean, I don't know. I've watched some and then it just sparks something in my, you know, brain and go, oh, wow, that's a good idea. I could, but I have this and I can do that, and, you know. But anyway, um, those are just some ideas. Uh, there's just, there's a ton, but you can take the basic type of elements there and do whatever it is that you think that you're going to like or what you think is going to look good. Um, so, you know, everyone needs to, to just kind of play around. That's the only way that you're ever going to learn things. I keep seeing people all the time say stuff about, well, I've done all this and I'm afraid to start. Well, the only way you're going to ever learn is you have to start and you're going to make mistakes, but you're going to also learn things. So just make sure that you, um, you know, watch a few videos. There's tons out there and it will give you some ideas and just allow yourself to play and have fun with it and be creative, you know, try and do something different. Okay. Anyway, that's it guys. I, I really thought I had it all. And then I just thought of that octopus. And then all of a sudden I thought of this. And anyway, just to give you an idea of some things that you could do, um, sky's the limit. You just figure it out on your own and you'll, you'll come up with things. All right. Take care.